Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Angel One Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hitul Gutka from Angel One Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss Angel One's Q2 FY24 financial and business performance. The recording of today's earnings call and transcript will be uploaded on our website under the Investor Relations section. The financial results, investor presentation, and the press release are also available on the website. For today's call, Angel One is represented by Dinesh Thakkar, Chairman and Managing Director, Vineet Agrawal, CFO. We also have the senior <coughs> leadership team of Angel One, along with SGA, our IR consultants. The leadership team will give you a brief overview of the operational and financial performance of the quarter gone by, followed by a Q&A session. Please note, there may be certain forward-looking statements during the call, which must be viewed in aggregate with the risks that the company faces. With this brief introduction, I now invite Mr. Dinesh Thakkar for his opening remarks. Thank you, Utul. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to share that quarter two FY24 reflects the superior execution of Angel One's robust uh, growth strategies as we continue to gain market share across various parameters. I will take you through some of the company's key development and leave you with a summary of our plans for next few quarters. After which, Vinit will walk you through our financial performance. Seamless and superior client experience on our digital platform is the bedrock of company's growth. To maintain this growth in digital era, we must always prioritize our clients' needs and keep current with a rapid pace of technological and product development. During the quarter, we rolled out enhancement across the super app, which led to further improvement in our overall NPS. I am happy to share that we continue to innovate and offer our clients some of the industry's leading features across all offerings on our platform. We have focused specially on simplifying the onboarding process for both new to market and experienced clients, thus giving them a superior experience of our tech capabilities right from the first point of contact with our super app. The success of this approach is evident from our improved ranking amongst the top 10 club of free finance app on Play Store and our third place ranking on iPad. Since majority of our clients are digital natives hailing from tier 2 cities and beyond who are new to market, it is imperative we create journeys that are user-friendly, compelling, and easy to follow as we handle them through their initial experience of our products. For example, through TradeBuddy within uh, the Super App, we present a platform from which these new investors can embark on their first trading journey. This feature, compiled by influencers within a diverse customer cohort, offers a repository of curated educational videos in regional languages, which leads to better acceptance and motivation to consume such content. Moreover, to encourage and help young people to invest systematically and build their lifetime wealth, we have deployed and released the stock SIP feature. Over the course of the year, we will roll out several more exciting features, such as market or open interest analytics, global indices, and stock discovery. This will further simplify our clients' investing and trading journey. Our endeavor to develop a lifelong relationship with our clients through a comprehensive digital financial services playbook has reaped handsome dividends. 
evident in the steady uptick of unique SIP registered through our app. With over 7,25,000 unique uh, SIP registered uh, in quarter two FY24, we continue to remain India's second largest player in terms of incremental registered SIPs. Furthermore, we are systematically broadening our financial services offering with plans to close the financial life cycle loop of our clients by distributing consumer credit products on our digital platforms in the upcoming quarter. We are currently building the platform and in integrating our lending partners. We are also developing data-driven intelligence across customers' credit profile to help lenders' underwriting process. With such a large client pool, we have access to a large quantum of data. We are harnessing the power of data by building predictive models driven by deep learning of our client's behavioral pattern to further elevate the client's experience on our platform. These models are integrated in our system using AI ML techniques to craft hyper-personalized journey, ultimately enhancing client satisfaction and delight. We have developed significant pivotal strategies to augment our decision-making process based on this advanced insights and forecasts, which has enabled us to adapt quickly to changing market conditions. We are investing in AI-led personalization to enhance user discovery on our super app. We are also working towards incorporating the recommendation of Data Protection Act to the extent notified to ensure greater security and consent framework for our clients. As mentioned in our quarter one FY24 earning call, we rolled out our brand campaign to enhance awareness of our full stack fintech platform to address all our clients' financial needs and aspirations. The reception of this platform has been a resounding success, as we have noted through our brand track exercise. During the quarter, we onboarded Nishan Jain as our Chief Business Officer for Assisted Business. He was pivotal in scaling up the online ordering business of Zomato and growing the merchant network of Bharat Pay. Nishan has also held senior leadership position at Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Nishan's experience in building large-scale franchisee will help formulate alliance with essential stakeholders and enhance business uh, performance through a strategic growth of our assisted business. Here we plan to diversify and become a multi-channel business as we build an ecosystem that offers a full suite of financial products on our platform. We will leverage the huge data set and our digital capabilities to empower our partners to serve a wider client base. We plan to further augment our NXT platform as we integrate more features based on data, thus enabling our partners to have a more integrated approach to growth. Through this medium, we'll be able to connect and positively influence a large underserved segment of the country's population. I'm also happy to introduce Ravish Sina, who has taken over the reins as CPTO. Ravish has a remarkable track record spanning over two decades. He held senior leadership positions in cutting-edge uh, technology companies such as Flipkart and Yahoo. Ravish will drive the delivery of Angel's product vision, strategy, design, engineering, and cross-functional influence. During the quarter, the board approved our business restructuring plan, which includes the proposed move of our broking business under our direct and assisted channel to our wholly owned subsidiaries, Angel Crest Limited and Angel Securities Limited, respectively. By doing this, Angel One Group will have a more focused and efficient organizational structure, and each business will have better flexibility and independence to foster growth and become a leader under their respective segments. As Angel One will be a flagship company, it will continue to house the super app, tech infrastructure and development, product development, data analytics, and other business support functions. Since all the companies are wholly owned subsidiaries, there will be no negative impact on financial performance of the company. In quarter two FY24, we moved ahead with filing of final approval of our AMC business. We are progressing rapidly in setting up 
the business infrastructure and building the team and are continuously engaged with regulator on this regard. It gives me great pleasure to share with you that our organizational culture is being well recognized. We have now been listed amongst the top 100 best companies to work in, for in India, both for women and millennials. A recognition given to us by the Great Place to Work Institute. This fortifies our commitment to develop a safe and secure workplace for everyone. I am delighted to share with you that our operational performance in quarter 2 FY24 has been historic. We acquired over 2 million customers in quarter 2 FY24, which is our lifetime best. Thus, growing our client base to over 17 million as of September 2023. This growth has advanced our share of India's incremental and total DMAT account to 22% and 13.2% respectively. Our orders, a key revenue driver of our business, grew by robust 36% sequentially to over 338 million, again marking our lifetime best. The ADTO generated on our platform continued to be in an uptrend, growing by 30% quarter on quarter to nearly rupees 30 trillion as we continue to gain market share in overall retail equity turnover by 168 bits quarter on quarter to 26.2 percentage. In H1 FI24, we acquired over 3.4 million clients and reported nearly 587 million orders executed on our platform, which is 73% and 63% respectively of FI22 performance. I hope this insight has given you a flavor of our tech-driven business model and our growth strategy to become a more integrated financial service play. Vinit will now take you through our financial performance, after which we will be happy to answer your questions. Vinit, over to you. Thank you, Dinesh Bhai, and good morning, everyone. As highlighted by Dinesh Bhai, quarter two of FI24 has been a very strong quarter for us as we present our historic best performance across both operational and financial parameters. Our quarterly total gross revenues exceeded the rupees 10 billion mark for the first time during quarter two of financial year 24. This was driven by robust market conditions coupled with amplified client activity as seen from our historic best average daily turnovers, average daily orders, which grew by 29.7% sequentially to 5.4 million, taking our ag aggregate orders to 338 million in quarter two FI24. Notwithstanding that there were Three, that is 5% more trading days in quarter two of FI24 when compared to FI21, 24, uh, quarter one of FI24, our gross broking revenue grew by 30.4% quarter on quarter to nearly rupees 7.3 billion, accounting for about 69% of our total gross revenues for quarter two of FI24. FNO continues to drive our gross broking revenue, contributing 85% in quarter two of FI24, while the share of cash and commodity segments remained stable at 11% and 4% respectively. Since majority of our clients are under the direct channel, their share in our net broking revenue stood at approximately 78%, and the balance 22% was contributed by clients acquired through our assisted business. As clients continue to transact on our platform, their contribution to revenues remain robust. Share of more than two-year-old clients steadily increased to 46% in quarter two from 25% in quarter two of FI22. Uh, the longevity of these young new-to-the-market revenue-generating clients on the platform is further being fortified through our various initiatives, developments, and offerings across the entire spectrum of Angel One's super app platform. It is noteworthy that we continue to witness healthy revenue progression as clients become more attuned to our platform. I would like to emphasize that our cohort level data remains exceptionally robust. The most recent data regarding broking revenue from clients entering their second, third, and fourth years shows strong performance at 85%, 80%, and 63% respectively of their first year revenue. When we apply this updated behavioral data to our client set acquired in FI22, 
their three year estimated revenue to cost of acquisition re- continues to remain very robust at 7.9 times this reinforces the strong unit economics underlying our business interest income which includes interest earned from our client funding book and from deposits with exchanges grew by approximately 25% quarter on quarter to rupees 1.8 billion this accounted for 17% of total gross revenues in quarter 2 of fy24 the ancillary transaction income linked to the turnover clients to on our platform stood at approximately 0.9 billion accounting for nearly 9% of quarter 2 fy24 total gross revenues finance cost was higher by 44% quarter on quarter to rupees 264 million in quarter 2 of fy24 on account of higher average borrowings for the period in line with higher client funding book quarter 2 of fy24 finance cost also includes the impact of higher borrowings for substituting the underlying collateral for bank guarantees with own funds towards margins with clearing corporation pursuant to the sebi circular discontinuing any client funds as collaterals for bank guarantees employee benefit expenses including esop cost at 1.3 billion rupees in quarter 2 of fy24 was higher sequentially due to increase in our headcount and related hiring spends other opex for the quarter of over rupees 2.6 billion grew in line with our operations driven by spends on higher client acquisition their one time onboarding costs operating expenses towards tech infrastructure dmat charges csr and other expenses our consolidated operating margin for the quarter stood at 51.3% versus 48.6% in quarter 1 of fy24 26% increase in depreciation and amortization costs to rupees 112 million in F, uh, quarter 2 of fy24 was on account of the commissioning of our disaster recovery site at chennai our consolidated profit after tax from continuing operations grew 37.9% quarter on quarter from rupees 2.2 billion in quarter 1 to over rupees 3 billion in quarter 2 of fy24 for quarter 2 fy24 the board has approved a distribution of 35% of post tax profits as second interim dividend to the shareholders aggregating to, to, to rupees 1.06 billion translating to rupees 12.7 per equity share our h1 fy24 gross, total gross revenues and profit after sta- tax stood at 18.6 billion and 5.3 billion respectively representing a growth of 30.1% and 32.9% over the corresponding period last year period in cash and cash equivalent increased to rupees 76 billion on the back of increase in client margins period and client funding book grew to nearly rupees 19.5 billion compared to rupees 11.5 billion as of march 2023 consolidated net worth of the company grew to rupees 26.1 billion as we continue to operate the business within our desired margin profile our h1 fy24 annualized return on average equity remains healthy at 44% with this i conclude the presentation and open the floor for further discussion thank you thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of swarnap mukherjee from bnk securities please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity sir uh, hope i am audible yes sir yeah yeah so first of all i'd like to con- congratulate all of you for uh, the strong performance that you have recorded uh now coming to questions uh, uh, you know first question is on the assisted part of the business so uh, in slide 6 you have given some color on uh, how what is the plan but i request you to give it in little bit more granular and maybe quantitative manner so that we can understand what this part of the uh, the journey of the business is expected uh, from this part 
and uh, given that you have men mentioned you know involvement of leading dsas and mutual fund distributors so are we eventually going to mold this part of uh, business into a national distributor kind of a model and will retail be our core focus areas or are we going to kind of move up the scale and uh, target as and as well uh, so that is the first question uh secondly sir also wanted to understand uh, a couple of things on the recent business performance first of all uh, the strong increase in the number of orders that we are recording per day so uh, what would be the reasons if you could break it down so apart from the fact that the overall market remains buy and uh, how how is activation of new customers going on whether that is resulting in this or in you know bac also ramping up in volume so i mean similar levers if you could point out in little bit more detail on that uh, and thirdly uh, related to the customer acquisition uh, wanted to understand uh, you know uh, the strong growth we are seeing how would be the uh, contribution of the ep channel related to that and the nsc directive that have come up uh, where we are standing on that so these are my questions so mr mukherjee what i understand your first question was on existing channels so i will ask uh, nishan to answer that part yeah thanks for your question uh, doctor uh, let me kind of uh, uh, paint the uh, a picture uh, which may help you kind of decipher what one is intending to do uh, today if you look at uh, our existing scenario we are primarily centered around a uh, single channel of acquisition which is sub brokers and primarily in the equity fmo play now if one was to zoom out uh, what you would see is that there are uh, limitless possibilities and Uh, a, a lot of opportunity for uh, partnerships which exist if one was to kind of uh, look at types uh, with fintechs uh, various health tech players uh, banks even if you look at certain other channels for example the mutual fund distributors or the pofps or the dsa uh, uh, if one was able to kind of uh, provide a good product market fit and kind of uh, cater to the niche uh, that they exist in uh, perhaps there are a lot of synergies that could be built out so the idea of assisted business is therefore to have a multi channel multi product play and be able to eventually build a funnel through which we cross sell our anchor products at a certain point in time with the end objective being creating a angel one equivalent size in the next 3 to 5 years within uh, assisted business Okay, Mr. Mukherjee, I was unable to get your second part of the question. Can you uh, uh, repeat that? Yeah. So, uh, uh, second part on on the assisted business was that uh, once we embark on the plan, and uh, uh, thank you, Nishant, for giving this color. So, once we embark on this plan, will it? the kind of center around our existing uh, customer i mean the kind of customers we tap into right now say younger customers and i think an increasing mix towards uh, tier 2 tier 3 uh, customers or shall we also kind of gravitate towards maybe more higher ticket customers and uh, Uh, be more act like more a wealth outfit uh, uh, in the in the making so that was i think my second part of the question on the assisted sales yeah so like uh, target audience that would be targeting would be much would be much beyond uh, looking uh, as uh, nishan said that we would be looking at uh, like uh, distribution uh, channels uh, where we can sell uh, lots of other product like insurance mutual fund lending product and even that will include lots of uh, concern like uh, wealth management kind of like product uh, so overall uh, the kind of a market we are looking at is much beyond that what we were catering to previously and just to add to what uh, uh, dinesh ji uh, mentioned uh, see we are looking at uh, various customer cohorts so the idea is not to cater to Uh, not to have a singular strategy for uh, the across the, the entire spectrum the idea is to uh, create customer personas uh, create customer cohorts and be able to serve them based on what they require and therefore to your question uh, 
answer would be that yes, we would be serving different other segments as well, over and beyond what we currently do. And that's the whole idea of creating a wider play field. Understood. This is this is very helpful. Uh, thanks. Uh, so, sir, on the other couple of questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone, and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so, firstly, on the interest cost, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, there has uh, there is some impact of the upstreaming uh, element. Uh, then the margin trade funding book was also higher. But if I look at the interest cost, that's just gone up by eight crores and you had mentioned earlier that around 40 crore impact would be there for nine months just because of streaming. So that itself would entail around 12, 13 crores of incremental cost for the quarter. Uh, that is uh, that is my first question. Could you triangulate that for me as to you know what, uh, how should we look at this uh, interest cost uh, for this quarter and going ahead? <clears throat> Second is we've seen a very sharp ramp up in customer acquisition in this quarter. Uh, so what really has changed and what kind of momentum or uh, things uh, you know, should, we we should we look at uh, going ahead? And I think the previous question was also ab about one of the elements which was unanswer unanswered was with regards to the volumes uh, that came in uh, as a, uh, you know, per day per customer volumes have also been rising. So what is the kind of trajectory that we are looking at? And lastly, you know, you set up a new subsidiary uh, for wealth management. Uh, what is that exactly? And, you know, whether the distribution is going to be sitting in this company, uh, how, how are you going to distribute the business of APs or online, uh, uh, of, you know, distribution business will be, will it be housed under this subsidiary or how it's going to pan out? Could you leave that out for us? Uh, those will be my three questions. Thank you. So I will answer the uh, uh, rest of the question. Interest uh, cost wins will take uh, that later. Okay. So on sharp ramp up of uh, retail acquisition customers and all that, uh, that is attributed to our uh, shifting from like old app to new super app, which has a better journey and it has uh, like lots of uh, kind of like uh, areas where customers are able to really like and uh, when they look at the uh, broking services, they're finding it easy to use our app and uh, uh, be engaged with our app. So our uh, based on that improvisation in journeys and all that, we have seen a huge kind of like ramp up in NPS and all that, which clearly shows that people are liking our app. And there is always a vectoral word of mouth uh, in our market because this market is Nowadays, because of social media and all that, it's easy to understand that this app is better and people prefer each other. So that is one of the reasons. And second reason would be that last quarter, as we said, that we'll be spending on our branding exercise so that people know what kind of and like uh, this uh, shift we have done from single kind of talking app to this uh, latest kind of and like app. So that has also helped us. And plus, we had spent more this time on acquiring customers, keeping in mind unit-wise economy. But we were able to optimize our uh, marketing, our uh, acquisition through different different channels. That's the reason I would say it is combination of all this factor that we saw ramp up in uh, customer acquisition. In terms of volumes, again, credit will go to kind of like journeys that we have built. We are able to engage customers. We are able to monitor customers' journey. And we were able to build a good data science team who is helping us in terms of uh, uh, giving us some kind of like information about customer, their profile, what they will like, and how they will get engaged more. If you look at uh, when we introduced this uh, SIP journey, that has helped us to our customer not only to buy one more product, but this customer is engaged for one more product. That gives us more kind of time uh, with customer and our app. Uh, and uh, your question on this wealth management, wealth management, the total solution is not a distribution business. We would be creating lots of kind of solutions for HNI, and uh, we would like to go into that ticket size, which has been challenging in the market, how to serve a ticket size of 
50 lakh one crore and around that area. If you look at wealth management across market, they are focused more on five crore, ten crore and above. But we believe that kind of thing like technology capabilities that we have and uh, data science tools that we are using now, we can bring to this market uh, kind of thing like very effective product, which is effective for HNIs and ultra HNIs, and give this uh, kind of thing like solution to even people who want to just invest 50 lakh and one crore. So that is a target uh, for this wealth management. We will start in a normal way, serving HNIs and all that with proper solution. But we'll move towards using technology and bringing this cost of acquiring customer with this ticket size of 50 lakh and one crore lower and make them profitable. So for other businesses like uh, for uh, uh, product-based solutions, we have AMC and all that. So that will complete our approach in terms of wealth management. On interest part, I will uh, request a unique to answer that. Sure. Uh, good morning, Prish. Uh, on the interest uh, increase, uh, so when we gave a guidance of 40 crores for the nine months, it was based on uh, the assumption that uh, the uh, bank guarantees for client-denominated uh, funds will scale down gradually, and that's what has happened. Uh, from 1st of May 2023 to 30th of September, the scaling down has been gradual, and therefore the uh, cost will not be linear. Now that the client... Uh, uh, denominated bank guarantees have completely gone, so the uh, cost will be uh, higher for this quarter and the quarter after that. So, just uh, we need to, uh, further extending that point. You mentioned so, so this quarter still, you know, even if I assume that you have a very limited portion of that uh, uh, 40 crores, let's assume it's around 5 crores. Okay, so the total cost has gone up by 8 crores only, where your uh, funding book has gone up, your borrowings on the balance sheet have gone up. So somehow I'm not able to, uh, unless your costs have, uh, your borrowing costs have gone down materially, I'm just trying to understand as to what really kind of uh, brought that, uh, the increase was so less. So the uh, funding book has not uh, gone up for the entire quarter. It's towards the second half of the quarter that the funding book has uh, grown. So if you see the average is about 14 and a half, 15 million or so. Uh, so, uh, when you see the period end book, then obviously it's 19.5 billion uh, as compared to, uh, you know, 11.5 at the start of the year. Uh, so, it's not a, uh, you know, a sudden increase that has happened at the start of the quarter and therefore the funding has also, the borrowing has also uh, increased in uh, proportion to that. What you see in the balance sheet is the period end number, it's not the average uh, borrowing that uh, is seen. So is it fair to assume that out of that 40 crores, what you've mentioned, a good portion of, uh, uh, let's assume around 35 crores is still pen is yet to come? Or would you want to change that number or two or 40 crores to a lower number? Uh, no, I'll uh, maintain that 40 crores because there is growth in business and therefore, uh, you know, there will be requirement of uh, margins to be placed with the exchanges. So uh, we would continue to maintain that guidance of about 40 crores or so for the uh, you know, for this financial year. And just a follow-up on the acquisition cost you've been mentioning, uh, uh, customer acquisition cost, if I just divide the total admin cost and uh, uh, the number of acquisitions that made, it used to be around 1,500 rupees per customer till for the past three quarters. It's coming at 1,250. Obviously, the base is much better because of, you know, 1.3 million was the run rate and 2.1 million is now. But is there anything else to read into it, whether the customer acquisition cost trajectory um, uh, and this momentum would continue? Uh, so uh, the admin cost is not uh, directly uh, uh, for the cost of acquisition. There are other elements as well, including the operation cost towards tech infrastructure, the branding cost that we incurred, the onboarding cost that is there. So, uh, you know, you cannot directly uh, divide the number with the number of clients that we are required. Um, the customer acquisition costs have not moved significantly it's, uh, in the same uh, line as it was earlier. Uh, as you know, we don't disclose the number, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. 
We'll take the next question from the line of Chintan Seth from Giri Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, audible. Yeah. Uh, so two set of questions. One is uh, on on uh, a bit harping on the orders, you know, for, for client order and all. If you give us some color on you know the trading sequence between a mature client versus new client, as you already mentioned in your opening remarks, that the mature uh, two year older customer cohort is uh, contributing more to our booking net booking revenue. If you can provide a color on how the mature client uh, trade uh, for uh, for day order or uh, quarterly orders versus a new client, uh, it gives some color that uh, more business is coming. Obviously, intuitively it looks like more business is coming, but how how skewed it would be that 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 I would, would like to you know understand and what I what kind of risk you foresee in terms of these orders you know softening down. Uh, uh from the mature any 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 uh, thought process or any concern you have that this order may might taper down uh, in in the uh, upcoming future uh that would be uh, the question and second on the on the cost side um, you did mention that uh, uh, we are in line with what we are spending right now uh, i believe uh, uh, there will be some thought process in terms of number of uh or you know customer onboarding at a at a aggregate level uh, either we uh, share in the overall demand account in the country uh, and post which uh, the need for uh, spending more towards client acquisition will will start to decline uh, so any any thought process around that uh, where the inflection point will come uh, or the target that you have internally uh, you know worked out from that point onwards uh, the need for uh, investing for client acquisition will slight you know, start to taper off if you can provide that uh, you know uh, understanding that these, these are the two sets of questions thank you yeah chintan what you are looking at uh, very granular kind of detail uh, the thing that we don't provide uh, what we provide it is in our presentation slide 11 i would ask uh, our revenue officer devendra to touch upon that but before that let me just uh, cover on uh, like uh, cost side and all that it right now it's very difficult to say what impact uh, like uh, this thing kind of like uh, would be seeing in cost in near future because what we are seeing unit price economy has been very profitable so we try to spend based on our own kind of metrics that we have which is bit proprietary plus in terms of how much we should be spending so when we see there is a good opportunity to acquire customer which are profitable we try to press that uh, lever so overall i can say looking at under penetration this trend seems to be like uh, uh, will continue for uh, a long time because india if you see hardly 3 to 3 and a half percent people are active in this asset class so correct the right. performance of this asset has been excellent so i don't feel that uh, there would be any kind of like uh, phase where uh, uh, clients would not look at this market for building their wealth or creating a second income uh, so i would ask devendra to touch upon uh, whatever data i can provide in terms of client for order cohorts and all that devendra sure yeah hi chintan uh, from an overall point of view you know if you look at orders uh, uh, from mature clients and new clients point of view i think uh, and audible Yes, 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 Devendra. Yeah. So, from uh, a major and new kind of view, as Dinesh Bhai has already mentioned, that I think we came out with new journeys on the app, which simplified, uh, you know, usage for the active users particularly, where you now options what is has come out, and also for the new users, we have been building up new journeys, trade buddies, other products that we had come out. So, obviously, we improved the journeys of new users and active users very robustly on the app, and we have also used data science to customize it for different profiles of client, which has come out really, really well. in terms of the eventual order that you see on the platform obviously this is also supported by two major factors like market going to all time high and also right. multiple expiry days which provides more opportunity for active traders to participate in multiple days so there are also added on in terms of you know uh, active participation of active users particularly very very strongly but if you look at from a mature and new clients point of view we see this impact uh, has come equally on both fronts we have seen okay. equal impact on mature users which is very high active users as well as new users who are starting to come into the market and start experiencing different financial equity services in india itself 
so these are the two prime reasons na, that that we have seen within the system which has helped in terms of growing the orders so repeat orders i believe will be you know based on uh, the income they generate from trades right uh, and the given market is also supporting uh, supporting to some extent uh, uh, the the kind of ordering we are seeing right now uh, like, looks like uh, uh, you know to follow through to continue uh, but what are uh, from the angels point of view the, the kind of uh, information and the kind of uh, uh, futures you are, you are providing um whether if you can give us uh, how profitable uh, this newer or mature cohorts uh, uh, independently uh, whether they are making money uh, which 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 you know uh, brings them back to the uh, trading activity is uh, is it what we are seeing currently or any any risk or anything different you are reading there no, no, please just let me take this question one sec Yes, yes yes this market ups and down is not a new phenomena correct correct there from the day stock market was incorporated right <laughs> if you look at like only we uh, share that kind of data what can kind of like the quick business we get on year 1 year 2 year 3 so right. we have to look at cohort wise revenue whether it continues or not whether we look correct. at the com bubble era or we look at uh, like global financial crisis era We have seen market really going uh, to end zone where uh, investor traders lost money, but because they come to the market with limited risk capital, so because they are earning, they are generating kind of and like uh, revenue, so they are kind of and like engaged in the market. Not that they just do trade, they make loss and they stay away from the market. Mm-hmm. So based on kind of an historical trend, we have analyzed that trend in this digital uh, era is far better in terms of repeat order. Okay. because when they download an app app stays with them so whenever they right. see an opportunity in the market they may feel that okay when they enter that time opportunity was not good and they made mm-hmm. some losses but they go back to nowadays like social media try to see what's the right approach where they went wrong do some back testing and again they are active in the market correct right. okay so the behavior has changed uh, which we, and the kind of uh, you know the ease of uh, accessing the trading data and app through an app is helping them to you know uh, uh, to yeah, come back to the market the and access to information in. access to expert like right. uh, what right. we have built trade buddy and all that talking to mm-hmm. uh, community and trying to you all understand so all said mm-hmm. and done market has given good performance they they have realized it is their mistake so they have to improvise on that So this generation that way is very like uh, uh, proactive in terms of gaining knowledge and all that. Mm-hmm. Got it. I join back in. Thanks. Thanks for the insight. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Bhuvnesh Garg from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Uh, sir, couple of questions on your new businesses. Firstly, on the on the lending products distribution. We just want to understand that what uh, what would be your role in the partnership that uh, you had mentioned in the presentation that. Uh, Uh, through AI and AI and ML models, you would be uh, you would be creating profiles of your customer, and just want to understand what would be your role in that partnership and what kind type of products uh, that you will be offering through lending platform. So yeah, that's my question. Yeah, sure. And so Saurabh handles uh, heads over this uh, new business division. So I will ask Saurabh to answer this. Hi, Gunesh. uh in terms of the product that will be uh, offering to begin with it will be consumer personal loans unsecured consumer personal loans and uh, the kind of partnership that uh, will be having with uh, the l- the lending banks or nbfcs will largely be in the capacity of a distributor but we don't want to intend to just be a vanilla distributor we want to give all the intelligence that we can to our lending partners to help them underwrite better to help them collect better so that their portfolio performance increases and which in effect will mean uh, we can uh, uh, also benefit uh, from better commissions from them over time got it got it 
And sir, any particular targets we have in this uh, lending space uh, in terms of AUM or in terms of revenue where we want to reach over the next uh, three years? So actually we can't give out that number, but we have very steep aspirations with respect to the credit business. We'll, be, we'll start slow to ensure that we have delivered the best experience to our customers and scale significantly post that. There is a tremendous potential to grow the retail credit business in India. Got it. And so second question is on our wealth management business. So if I heard it correctly, uh, you said that you will be targeting customers in 1 to 10 crore tickets, right? Is that correct? No. Let me just start that. See, today if you look at wealth management business, no, like it is mostly focused on HNI and Alpha HNI, where every ticket size is 5 crores and above. So we'll start our journey because expertise lies with people who are managing fund at this ticket size. But we believe ADL has a unique capability. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the management's line has been disconnected. Mr. Dinesh Tucker, uh, kindly stay connected while we try to reconnect them. gentlemen, the line for Mr. Dinesh Tucker has been connected. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Bukhnesh, for this. Uh, so, what I was trying to say that this wealth management piece currently is served for only HNI, Ultra HNI in a very effective way, what we call uh, where they are able to handle wealth in a right perspective. But if you look at India, India is market where actually we must be able to give similar kind of solution and wisdom to lower ticket size like uh, 50 lakh, 1 crore kind of ticket size. So we would like to use the same kind of like solutions what is provided by good wealth managers, use our technological uh, capabilities, use data science, so that we are able to have an access at a lower cost, give solution at a lower cost. So plan would be to start as a proper traditional wealth management business, but try to use our technology and data science people so that we are able to serve a lower ticket size, middle belly, which is growing at a rapid speed. Got it. Understood. And sir, any particular targets uh, we have for wealth management over next three years? No, I think we are expecting uh, that uh, we'll make uh, kind of like uh, more announcements by last quarter of this financial year. Until now, we have just formulated our ideas and what we want to do, but we have to really get into the market to. Uh, create a proper content strategy and how to go about go to market and all that. Got it. Got it. So you can Thank expect you, some announcement from us maybe by the last quarter of this financial year. Got it. Thank you, sir, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Godha from Evendus Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, so the first question is on some some data keeping questions. Uh, basically, uh, given given the other OPEX is, has grown significantly uh, year on year in the current year. So, just just if you can give how much uh, was was. I was last... unable to understand your uh, this voice was getting cracked. Yeah. Please, can you repeat uh, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the question I was asking, sir, was that uh, given given we have seen a strong growth in other OPEX in the current year. Uh, just wondering. Uh, last, uh, uh, we believe the last part of the growth could be driven by advertisement expense. So, so can you just uh, uh, highlight how much we have spent on those advertisements uh, 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 and then how sustainable it is going ahead? That's point number one. On, on data keeping, I have two more questions. One, one is uh, if, if you can um, break down that 8 crore expense increase uh, in the interest, can we safely assume it is largely because of the, uh, the, the changes with respect to streaming of the client money or bank guarantee not available? And lastly, uh, given given the uh, chairman has spoken about instant in his settlement, um, just wanted to understand the impact uh, uh, on us if, if the float income or, or what kind of float income we earn 
on the client money which which could potentially disappear if 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 uh, uh, instant thing a settlement uh, gets implemented that, that's on data keeping i have a couple of questions on on authorized to channel uh, a, 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 a official channel maybe after you answer this i can ask that one yes this can you take all these three questions yeah so uh, about the uh, cost that we've incurred on uh, branding we don't disclose that uh, sankeet so uh, mm. it's it's built in the uh, uh, other expenses as i said uh, majority of the expenses uh, in, uh, increasing the expenses towards other expenses has been because of the growth in the uh, client acquisition uh, or, you know from 1.3 million to 2.1 million plus the onboarding cost and there is uh, uh, the cost that we've incurred for the uh, branding um, campaigns that we've run during the quarter uh, that's on the uh, uh, the other expenses part on the uh, interest uh, uh, again i mean i'm sorry i can't disclose much details beyond the uh, uh, data that we've shared uh, but as i said the increase uh, in the um, margin requirement will go up uh, with uh, the uh, client denominated margins uh, bank guarantees getting abolished from 30th of september so there will be this uh, uh, incremental cost on the uh, uh, on the borrowing and the uh, bgs for the next two quarters uh, we've given a guidance for 40 crores uh, during the nine months till 31st of march and we maintain that uh, and lastly we need to have the short income uh, on client money uh, well that's something which will pan out during the uh, in the uh, future Uh, right now uh, we have uh, already shared a lot of information about the kind of uh, you know um, uh, income that we generate from clients margins etc but uh, as and when the instant settlement gets implemented we'll see how the uh, margins uh, move and then we'll be able to give a guidance on that okay perfect uh, so uh, the last uh, the second question which i had was on on the authorized channel uh, or or assisted uh, channel model uh given given we have been incrementally focusing on this business uh, uh, to the extent i understand this is a pass through model suppose if you are earning 100 rupees uh, by distributing a loan or a mutual fund or or doing any product on financial or or insurance in that sense so if you are earning 100 rupees probably you need to pay 90 or 95 to 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 the authorized person and 5 rupees is what you might retain so so they just wanted to understand how exactly uh you you are going to build this model and and if i look at this model in silo uh then then is it safe to assume that that the ebitda margins of this business will be invariably lower compared to what you do in the uh, direct business model right now uh okay i think you have to look at this model in a different way because when we talk about margins and all that we don't take the cost so that cost is taken by our uh, assisted uh, channel uh, business partner and all that So yeah. that way, this model is very profitable and uh, very kind of helpful in terms of cyclical times and all that. Because all cost uh, uh, is uh, taken by our business partner. So what we bring on the table is uh, like uh, affiliation with good manufacturers, where because mm-hmm. of scale we are able to negotiate a better price. Second, mm-hmm. we are able to use uh, kind of like uh, solutions that we have, and we can uh, customize. Uh, to the level where our uh, business partner will be able to serve their customer better using our uh, aiml tool and data science that we apply in our platform so we bring in lot more than just kind of and like giving an access to some manufacturer but when it comes to managing customers asset portfolios distribution understanding uh, being more intelligent in terms of understanding asset allocation that is where our usp comes in that is where a platform like nxt and this are used so that sub uh, this uh, kind of assisted uh, business partner is able to acquire more customer at a lower price he is able to get more uh, kind of like uh, creative material in terms of communicating with uh, customer and acquiring more and when it comes to serving also we are able to tell him what are the product in the market and how each and every individual portfolio is performing so that then huge kind of support which uh, kind of like channel partner gets nishan if you want to add anything on this 
Uh, sir, this 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 can follow up on that. I mean, given given in our broking business, to the extent I understand, it is seventy thirty sharing. Um, so so, do you expect uh, that seventy thirty sharing to to operate in 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 this 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 other products also, or it will be different uh, meaningfully from 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 what we experience in broking business? So, uh, I'll just one technician. I, so that every business model is derived by what kind of an investment we are doing, and what is an ROI to that. So yes. what they look at any business uh, where there's a huge opportunity of deploying our kind of thing like OPEX or CAPEX, which generates a reasonable, good, decent kind of thing like uh, uh, returns, and it is scalable. So we would like to focus on that. Margin is not that important. So 70, 30, it can be 50, 50, it can be 90, 10. But what is important is that what is the scale of that business and what we are bringing on the table. And what kind of returns we'll get on investment we are doing? So I think because all these businesses does not require huge capital, so <laughs> ultimately it boils to business which is more sustainable. Because when we acquire this uh, business partners, they are in the market for like we have seen our business partners being in the market for like 10, 10, 20, 20 years, and plus whatever margins we share with them, ratio is such that we both are profitable. So in that sense. It is not less profitable. It is kind of a thing which is required to gain more market share in whichever business we get into. To have a kind of a like uh, diversity in terms of acquiring customers from whichever channel they want to use our service. So objective of being into assistant uh, business uh, the thing is much wider than just looking at margins. So I believe that India still like there are digital natives. There are people who want assistance. And those who want assistance is also a big market. Yeah. So combined with technology platform, what we can give, you know, it can create a very unique uh, USP. Yeah, Nishan. Yeah. So just building on what you just said, sir. Uh, see, I mean, uh, uh, there is a role that channel plays, and the role that is that acquiring customers and and bringing them onto our fold is primarily what they are focused around. And what the role that uh, we as service providers play uh, would be. Uh, kind of creating those products creating those customizations to be able to cater to that specific need and therefore both the parties involved are adding value and therefore they are being uh, reimbursed or or uh, or they are able to charge for the value that they create i think i would like to look at it from this perspective and not from a margin sharing perspective Got it. Got it. Perfect. And 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 last one. Uh, Let's take example for uh, for that matter to kind of uh, help you uh, internalize this point. Let's say as far as the lending model is concerned, mm-hmm. and let's say if I was to tomorrow time with the DSAs of the world and I play a role of a LSP, a loan service provider. Now yep. in a scenario where I help them identify a specific cohort, where we are able to charge a specific rate of interest and therefore creating enough lubrication in the system for them to be able to charge their dsa fee which they in any case would be getting and on top of which i am able to add value uh, by that specific cohort and fulfillment of those journeys and therefore i am able to bring in my margin it could be in form of uh, lsp fee or it could be in form of a upfront uh, onboarding fee so these are different value adds that one is creating and uh, the uh, overall proposition therefore becomes more robust got got it got it sir uh, perfect and, and 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 lastly given given you have raised on on the lending point uh, just just wanted to check that that uh, if, if if the uh, loan market you want to get into uh, whether whether ultimately you will even start a payment aggregator model uh, where where Uh, where uh, where the throughput through through your channel will be significant and and therefore um, uh, the personal loan disbursement thing can can be meaningful or or you want to be a pure DSA or or a aggregator of the DSA is kind of a model. Well, uh, this is a wider question and I would uh, request Dinesh you to respond on this. Yeah. Uh, so so we would uh, always uh, like to be a distributor of this uh, product. We see a big opportunity in lending. If you look at lending market currently now, so like uh, what is missing is last mile uh, kind of and like uh, uh, approach to and customer who are into remote areas and all that. And when you look at digital native young people, they want to consume everything on digital platform. So 
So we would not like to underwrite risk and all that where we don't have a competency. Our competency lies in creating an access to the market, creating a huge distribution network, and co-sharing that kind of like uh, revenues with our manufacturers who are expert on risk management and collection and all that. And regarding your payment aggregator question, see, I mean, there are different signals that different companies use for underwriting purposes. Now, mm -hmm. given that we are not necessarily into the underwriting part, uh, I am not sure if that is the signal we are using. I mean, payment aggregator using the transactions is able to underwrite the, uh, the, the customer who is actually intending to borrow. So the perspective changes. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. That's it from my side. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and 1. We'll take the next question from the line of Hartik Jain from Whitestone Financial Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so this uh, expiry changes happened, I think, from the 1st of September. So if you can just uh, give us the understanding how the volumes have moved up in the month of September versus August because I think now it has become a <clears throat> regular feature and it will give us some kind of uh, assessment how uh, the volumes can move uh, in this quarter also. Uh, so this is my first question. And sir, in, in terms of ancillary revenue, you said 90 crore is, is the kind of refund that we get because of our turnover. So... Um, uh, I just want to understand, uh, isn't isn't it required by the regulation to charge on an actual basis to the client uh, uh, the turnover charges? Uh, so uh, that is my second question. Secondly, sir, you have also mentioned that we uh, earlier we were not able to give Sensex futures and options in our, on our system, which has started, which which you mentioned in the uh, presentation. So uh, when did it start? Uh, 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 does it uh, did it contribute something to the revenue in in this quarter, or it started after after the quarter? So yeah, this this were my few questions. Sir. Yeah. So on expiry, we would not be able to comment much on that uh, because uh, uh, this all uh, changes which happened has been factored in our quarterly results. So you have to take some informed decision based on numbers that we have shared. And uh, on charging or uh, thing, uh, uh, rate to customer, we charge as per uh, slabs. And uh, like uh, that is where there is kind of like uh, whatever is like applicable to different different tailors based on that volume, we charge that. So it is in line with uh, regulation. And third, CB, uh, sorry, uh, uh, BSC, uh, we started just uh, last uh, week. Uh, still, it is not fully rolled out. The impact of BSC is not fully seen in our this quarter result. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, Mr. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for taking my questions. Uh, I think most of them are already answered. Uh, uh, congratulations for a very good uh, product. Uh, nevertheless, one question that I had in my mind was on this uh, unique SIP registered. So, you know, this is certainly, uh, you know, reaching a very significant sort of a scale. So at the moment, have you had any sort of a discussions with the AMCs or thought any, um, you have some thoughts about how to monetize uh, this thing? Um, and um, also, you know, given that you are also going to launch your own AMCs, uh, do you see any play between these two? Uh, and how do you see any monetization overall to come up in the this sort of a segment? Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, thank you for your questions. And uh, uh, if, uh, if you look at like uh, our uh, discussion, uh, like since few quarters, we were focused on uh, super app, and we strongly believe individual who comes on our platform, he should get everything uh, which uh, that person needs to achieve his uh, financial goals and all that. The first step was uh, like after booking to introduce uh, some other kind of an asset class where we see some uh, traction. The positive thing is that uh, we were able to see people liked uh, 
uh, more services on the same platform. That's the reason we just launched in April. In six months, we are number two in terms of a unique uh, SID register. So that clearly shows that people who are on one app, they are ready to buy multiple services, multiple products, provided we are able to give a right a journey. So that is where our uniqueness in terms of building a super app, building an engine which is more guided by data science and AI ML tool is very effective in terms of understanding what the customer wants and serving it at the right time. So we don't look at uh, earning from every transaction. What we look at that customer should be engaged on our app. If that person is engaged, today or tomorrow they are going to consume more, consume more services on our platform. Some products can give us uh, good revenue, some products may give less revenue, but overall what is important? What is cost of acquisition and what is the lifetime value of this customer? So we believe until now, none of the industry has really focused on lifetime value, which is much beyond what we can imagine. So because we are acquiring customers who is of the age of 25, 26, if you look at their lifetime value, it will be much beyond than what we are currently uh, uh, projecting. So today, if you look at, uh, like, uh, we have given numbers on that, our cost of acquisition to until now, in three years, we are able to recover almost 8x from our cohort. But if you are able to add few more services, create more engagement, more stickiness, we believe that this uh, parameter would have a positive impact. So that is where our focus is. Now your question on our own AMC. Yes, we believe our AMC would be totally on passivity management. I believe that passivity management is the right product for uh, young uh, individuals who are starting their journey. One, because ETS is an easy product, diversified product, and it's easy to divide it into steps and invest regularly. So definitely being into passively managed fund, what is going to help us is our distribution network, which is huge. So that way there is a synergy, there is a kind of like advantage uh, position that we have, and we are going to leverage that. Understood, sir. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one. We'll take the next question from the line of Varich Bangur from Pico Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, just wanted to ask on one thing. Uh, from 1st July, I think the lot size of bank nifty has reduced from 25 to 15. Uh, so, is there an impact of that also because a same trader would have to put in more number of orders for the same value that he is going to trade? And from that sense, uh, would it be structural going forward as well? Because that uh, number would remain same, right? From July, August, September to the coming months now on. Uh, Bhavin, can you take this question? <laughs> yes, sir. So, uh See, the, the bank nifty contracts uh, has uh, definitely changed from 25 to 50. Mm -hmm. But it has got actually uh, added in the number of trades that we have been uh, uh, we have been reporting till now. So uh, obviously there are there are set of customers who would want to actually trade a particular quantity. For them, the uh, number of orders would have gone accordingly. But uh, to to see whether this impact has actually caused the rise of uh, orders would be uh, we will not be able to mention on that particular thing. But yes, there are certain customers who who place orders based on number of lots. There are certain customers who place based on the number of quantity that they want to take. Yes. Fair enough. Thank you. That that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Pallavi Desh Pandey from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I just wanted to understand on the ESOP cost, uh, if uh, we factored in these, uh, we've had these new hirings, so what would be the cost we can factor in for the year? Vinit, can you take this question? Sure. So uh, on the ESOP cost, the guidance remains the same. Overall for the year, uh, uh, we had estimated the cost to be about 80 crores. Uh, the cost for new ESOPs that we uh, have granted and expect to grant will be in the range of about uh, 55, 60 crores. So we maintain that same guidance. Right. 
And secondly, on the ad spend, I think uh, you mentioned that you know, uh, will that be ramping up now with the you know these new businesses coming in, the loan business and uh, AMC. But do we see a ramp up for the ramp up in that from the current ram rate? So uh, for the lending business and other distribution businesses, we are actually not spending money to acquire those customers. We already have a, a large enough customer base internally who we could cross-sell and create a, a large enough portfolio there. So in terms of spending money to acquire customers this year and hence brand spend increasing, that won't happen. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhuvnesh Garg from Investor Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Uh, thank you for the follow-up. So just a data keeping question. Uh, firstly, if you can provide the interest rate that we charge on our MTF book, and secondly, if you can provide the breakup of our interest income into our MTF income and then uh, FD, uh, FD interest income. Yeah. These two questions. Please, please, this question. Yeah. We charge 18% annual for uh, the MTF uh, lending that we do, and of the total interest income that we have reported, almost 65% is uh, from the uh, fixed deposits and margins that we place with the exchanges, and about 35% is from the uh, margin trading. Got it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ruchita Sharad Kartke from iWealth Management LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Good afternoon, and congratulations on a good set of numbers. So I uh, wanted to ask, sir, when when do we see this AMC, the lending and the wealth uh, management business uh, starting up? Uh, sorry if I'm repeating the question. I must have missed it. So if you could just give a little clarity on that. No, sure, no problem. Uh, on uh, AMC and lending, uh, I will ask Saurabh and we need to take this question. On wealth management, it is too early to give, uh, comment anything on when it will start. So right now we are at our kind of like conceptualizing kind of stage. So maybe you will hear more about uh, this wealth management in next quarter in detail. On AMC, uh, Vinit, can you just uh, elaborate? And on lending, later on then, Saurabh can uh, add. On the AMC uh, business, we've already filed the application for final approval early August. Um, we are in the process of building up the uh, business infrastructure and the tech infrastructure and creating uh, partnerships with uh, key vendors. Uh, we expect uh, SEBI to conduct an on-site inspection once we are ready with the entire infrastructure and the team in place. And thereafter, uh, usually it takes about... Uh, between one to two quarters for SEBI to give their uh, final approval. So uh, most likely we should be able to, uh, we endeavor to get our final approval uh, either in the fourth quarter or early first quarter of the next financial year. On the credit business side, uh, most likely before the end of this fiscal, we should be able to go live. Okay, okay, understood, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Jankar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity. Uh, my question is related to ARPC. Uh, can you uh, provide the numbers for this quarter and previous quarter? Uh, I'm not sure. Devidra, uh, do we provide ARPC? No, we do not provide uh, this information, and this is internal information. So we don't provide any such information. Okay, uh, so I have one more question related to derivatives market share. Uh, as I can see, the derivative market share is all-time high. So uh, can you mention uh, some reasons which help you to gain uh, a 26.2% market share in this quarter, which is uh, by almost uh, 200 basis points as compared to previous quarter? Uh, Devendra? I think uh, as mentioned earlier, we had uh, a number of you know, product journey improvements that we have done on the product front, uh, which is helping the active users to engage in a much more wholesome way, uh, which has you now started contributing in the right way uh, in terms of participation. That has been the major impact you now where 
uh, we have made sensible free we have got basket order we have got options so there are multiple you know, uh, product journeys improvement that we have done which is causing easier uh, uh, usage by users who are active users particularly so that is what is majorly you know helping the overall movement of uh, the derivative market share as well uh, as a result okay uh, I, i have one general question just to ask uh, as you have a uh, good market share in derivative uh, uh, current uh, recently uh, uh, i think some psycho the sebi uh, made a report on derivatives uh, profit and loss of uh, retail customers so uh, it said that 89% were clients net loss and uh, uh, so can you tell uh, uh, so, so uh, the derivatives is a zero sum game so, so is it that the remaining 10% are, are earning uh, the losses made by 90% or uh, is it that the dis uh, fis or uh, uh, banks who are also trading in derivatives uh, they are uh, receiving the profit so what is your uh, take on this so sumit it's a good ob- observation i think uh, uh, report does not give detail about uh, if nine are losing as as you, as you said it's a zero sum game minus expenses where the other part is going it can be going to people who are into kind of like arbitrage business or affairs who are hedging but i think this report is not clearly mentioning that side so it, i would not be like we would not be the right person to answer this we have to check with the regulator on that Okay. Thank you, sir, and uh, congratulations for good set up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Jain from Whitestone Financial Advisors, Private Limited. Yes, uh, just uh, one uh, bookkeeping question. So, how much cash uh, would we have on our books uh, other than the client margin? Uh, uh, so, our own cash. Vinay. Uh, today we deploy about uh, 15 1600 crores of our own cash other than the uh, money that is uh, there in uh, long term uh, investments and assets so this is the money that we deploy for margins and for the other working capital requirements okay. thank you sir thank you. thank you the next question is from the line of pallavi desh pandey from samiksha capital please go ahead Yes, so just wanted to understand on the loan business. Uh, would we be then targeting since you said it's a cross sell more of the tier two, tier three uh, customers, uh, and uh, that would be pretty unique to us then. What is the question, please? Uh, can you the just... loan business um, for the loan business? Since you mentioned it's going to be more initially the cross sell. so does that indirect that implies that we will be having more tier 2 tier 3 and tier 4 uh, uh, kind of uh, customers uh, for that so since we are not acquiring customers for lending we are cross selling to our current base so whatever the composition is of the base that will be the composition of a lending business as well right so that's an area pretty much ignored by the current fintech players so i mean uh, in in terms of credit is that is where the opportunity lies right one uh, right. market itself is under penetrated and more and more lenders and issuers want to enter that market and since we have a very highly engaged base in those uh, same geographies we have a very high potential to capture that market right thank you so much thanks thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Dinesh Thakkar for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you for joining us on the call today. I hope we have been able to answer all your queries. Should you require any assistance, please feel free to get in touch with Hitul Gupta at HR or SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Good day. Thank you, sir, and the members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Angel One Limited that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you